Hey, good morning YouTube. This is Tech Mornings with the Tech Prepper, Episode 3. In this video, we're going to install Peregrine CMS with Docker. And to start, you'll need to install Docker locally. I will not go over this procedure, but there are plenty of helpful guides on the internet. And uh, for those of you who are already familiar with Docker, uh, we do have a Docker Hub account for Peregrine CMS, and there are a few images that are uh, available out there uh, that have been tagged. The one that we'll be looking at today is Issues 93 and the build from this past weekend. Now this is a early preview of the content restructuring, so there are quite a few bugs here, but this is the one I'd like to go through today since it'll demonstrate uh, the future of the content structure within Peregrine CMS. So to get started, we need to open up a terminal, and we need to start by pooling our uh, Docker image from Docker Hub by the tag that I have specified. So it'll be docker pool peregrine CMS slash peregrine CMS colon and then the tag. And in our case the tag is issues-93 2020-04-05-R1. And that'll take a few minutes since it is a fairly large image. Uh, we are in the process of uh, refactoring the doctor, docker images. Uh, so that they're more compact and use uh, better use of layers. Once that's complete, starting Docker from a uh, from a known image uh, as a container is fairly straightforward. Uh, in our case, we're just going to use Docker Run. We're going to use the interactive flag, and we're going to bind uh, Docker on port 8080 on our local system to the Docker port that's exposed, which is also 8080. And then we specify the Docker uh, image that we want, and it's the same value that we use for the docker pool command. I have a 2015 MacBook Pro, and I believe this process takes less than 30 seconds on my machine. So your mileage may, may vary depending on your current system. And while this is going, I want to encourage people to uh, comment in particular on these videos. Uh, this is not a series I'm planning on doing forever. I prefer to do the prepping videos. So unless there's community interest, I don't know how long I'm going to keep these going. Uh, as I mentioned before, I will be doing probably anywhere from probably about a dozen of these to get the site live. And I'm taking my time now with it to see if there is community interest. So the only way that I can gauge whether these are useful is views, likes, and certainly comments more than anything else. And I'm happy to have this also be a forum for issues as there are quite a few as we're working through the development of this open source project. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video really quickly till this is done. Oh, it looks like we're up and running. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and launch Chrome and go to localhost 8080 and log into Peregrine with the username admin and the default password admin. Again, there will be a future video on how to change this. Uh, it can be done within Composum. And as I mentioned in previous videos, Docker is my preferred method for implementation given the way that I plan to deploy it. So the first thing we see now with the new content structure build uh, we have the ability now to support multiple tenants or multiple sites. So let's go ahead and create a new website. And we're going to base it on theme clean flex. Uh, this Docker image build, I should point out, also has a special build of theme clean flex that's also using a branch that's designed around the new content structure. So if there is interest, again, comment and I can describe our Docker uh, build process, how I built this image, how we build it as part of our normal Travis CI pipeline. Uh, so happy to see if there's interest in building out a more in-depth Docker video. Then we have the ability to select, select our palettes. We'll do another video on how to add your own custom palettes. Uh, for right now, I really don't care which one I pick. So I'm going to go with warm tone since I'm a backpacker. And we're going to call our site the Tech Prepper. Oh, 
Okay, now that uh, we have created our site, let's go ahead and create a page. I will reserve a future video to go over uh, template creation uh, and also cr managing the master root template. Uh, templates are kind of an interesting area insofar as they're designed to create elements for a page that will not change, so you cannot edit them uh, at the page level uh, once you've created a page. Uh, more on that later, there's another feature that we're looking at uh, right now called skeleton pages. And what those allow you to do are to create a page based on a template, and then you can drag and drop um, all the components that you want that you would normally edit for like an article. So you could drop a H1, uh, rich text component, column controls, things of that nature. So when you create a new page, you can actually start with all of those pre-populated, but that does not currently exist in any of the... Uh, the main working builds at this time, but it is coming shortly. So for this quick demo, uh, I just want to do a second pass of creating another sample video page, again, just to get more familiar with the system. And what I'll do as a, an experiment, uh, I'll just use the root template for right now since I don't need a header and footer as of yet. Uh, there are some issues with the header and footer that we're working through. And I will go ahead and use yesterday's uh, video as an example and we'll call it uh, Tech Mornings Episode 2 and the page name will automatically be generated for you based on the page title so this will be the value you see in the URL uh, structure and it looks like I have a trailing space there Okay, so looking at my notes here, uh, let's start out by dragging a few elements on screen and we will put a H1 on the page. And I will give it a title. I'm copying my notes from, from off screen. Okay, the next piece I want to add is a rich text uh, element. A rich text component, rather. And I'm going to grab uh, the summary from yesterday's video. And I'm going to go full screen here and the links that we had in the uh, description. And I'll also fix a typo on the formatting for clean theme flex. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And then there's another area I wanna talk about here, which is how to deal with columns. Now this is an area I would love feedback. Um, myself and another colleague were confused by the nomenclature used for container and container block. Turns out container block is the outermost containing object and the blocks are the individual uh, pieces. So let's say that I want to do a two column layout here, uh, one for my video and maybe some textual companion code or text to go along with that video. We'll go ahead now and drop two containers. And I've noticed that for the drop target here, um, to get this to work properly, it's a little uh, rough at the moment. Uh, I drop the first container on the page, I click on it, and then we can actually adjust the width. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this and set it to six columns. And this is another bug that I think I do need to raise. Uh, if I want the container to sit right next to it, uh, if I drop it here, it tends to float directly above it. I actually have to put it on the container block end, and it seems to work pretty well that way. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is drop in our uh, media video component. And again, it seems best when I drop them on the container end for whatever, re for re whatever reason. And then, as I did yesterday, I'm going to go ahead and manage the uh, 
uh, change the the URL, which I did not copy. And I'll just copy the YouTube ID as I did yesterday. Perfect. And just two more components to drag and drop uh, before we talk about what's next for the upcoming video. And I'd like to drop in another rich text component. And for this one, I'd like to go ahead and just put some notes on the prerequisites that we discussed yesterday and the, the steps that we had. So just like before, we'll drop that there. Um, we do have a code block component, which is nice for form form formatting code. Uh, for me, it feels really unnatural since I write a lot of documentation that are uh, step-oriented. So I actually have to alternate between dropping a rich text component on the page, then a code block, and then another rich text component. Uh, it feels really unnatural, so I'm going to be looking at some ways to streamline the editing process for that use case. Um, and then here we'll go ahead and drop a code block. And for that one, I will just drop our three commands that we ran yesterday. And I'll set language as bash so that it could be styled later. And one thing to note while I was experimenting, experimenting with this, if for some reason the text that's in this area overflows on the line, it actually causes this whole container to shift below um, these two or the 12 rows that I have here. Uh, so I'll raise that one as another issue as well. So at any rate, let's conclude by doing a quick preview. So the site is looking a little bit better. Um, obviously, we've got some work to do on the header, footer, and some other text below here, but fairly straightforward to uh, build out a simple video page. And uh, I think in the next video, uh, again, I'll leave it up to what the viewers want. Uh, I'd like to either go over uh, the template, the skeleton, template first, skeleton pages, and then probably header, footer management using uh, either one of those solutions. Uh, the other option I'm looking at building out is a video around how our Docker build process works and how you can actually use the, uh, the Peregrine Git project to create your own Docker images. At any rate, uh, thanks for joining today. Be strong, be safe, and think about using Peregrine for your use case. Bye, y'all.